Good morning or good afternoon, whatever time of day you listen to podcasts. I used to listen on my way to work and sometimes during work because I needed a distraction from the mind-numbing boringness that used to be my day job, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. I want to talk to you about how you can realistically plan your exit strategy so that you don't have to have that uh, mind-numbing job again. And this is actually kind of appropriate because just a couple of hours ago, one of my mastermind groups talked about this. One of my clients, as a lot of people are, who come and want to work with me either as their their coach or in a mastermind group, they are either, well, there's two groups. There's the kind of, there's the group that kind of wants to start a business and they'll see what happens. And then there's another group like the like the group this morning where one of one of the members is really just miserable and he he made the comment that he, it's hard to go and work on his building his business on his computer because it's the same computer that kind of makes him miserable because he's working on it for for his day job and anyway i had i had this come up in the meeting this morning and then a few weeks ago, one of my one of my old friends from uh, from IBM messaged me, and this is that's that's going to be a, a content of what we're going to talk about today. But I was thinking, okay, so how what what do we really need to do? What how do we realistically map out a plan? In addition to reading Exit Strategy, which I hope you will pick up a copy of that. I'll tell you some more details here in a minute. But how do we really begin to go about thinking, not this pie in the sky, not this, uh, oh yeah, I, I want to start a business. But what what are the steps? What are the things that I need to think about? What are, what are some of the math that I need to do in order to realistically make an exit and do what I want? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's throw up an intro, and I'll be right back. I'm not one of those entrepreneurs who gave up their six-figure salary and fancy office to start a business. And I wasn't selling lemonade to my neighbors when I was seven. I wasn't born an entrepreneur, and I never laid awake at night dreaming of owning my own business. My name is Ellery Wells and I was forced to make a decision. Welcome to the Ellery Wells Show, where we talk with real entrepreneurs about real problems that they're facing and real solutions on how they are overcoming obstacles, achieving their goals, and making a difference in the world. If you're an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, this is the place to be to help you start, build, or grow your business. So as I mentioned before, I want you to be happy. Every time you what, put your head up off of the pillow and go about your day. And you think about what you're going to be doing for the next, I don't know, 8, 10, 12 hours. I want you to be happy. And that's that's kind of what brought me to write the post and record this episode. Because to me, I, you if you've listened to the show, you know, I don't want to say emotional. That doesn't sound like the right word either. But I get fired up when I when I when I hear people talking about things that they would like to do, but they feel like they can't do. And one of those things I think you should do is start a business. I think everybody should start a business at least once in your life. And I'm not just talking about, you know, your version of that detective agency that my sister and I started when we were like seven years old. And, um, we we printed up these little business cards on pieces of paper and like Corel Draw or or something like that and and we looked for the neighbor's cat in a in a pen or something that my mom said she lost. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where you actually have profit and loss. You have products that you sell or create and sell. A message that you try to get out there that you know the the business things of business i think everyone should try that at least once because i fully believe that entrepreneurship will make you and me both of us a better people but as we get older we we take on more responsibilities cars mortgages rent uh kids those kinds of things and as we get older and as we take on these 
these additional responsibilities, becoming an entrepreneur becomes more and more difficult. And since I want you to leave your job and start a business and do what you love, it's not hokey. It can happen. Uh, because I want those things for you, I want to discuss how you can realistically plan your exit strategy so you can live a life you enjoy and do what you want and be excited. If you follow me on Snapchat, you should. Uh, I, I share fun things, although I'm thinking about maybe changing that over to Facebook or Instagram. I'm not sure. Uh, let me let me know. But I, I shared with with my wife one day. She was home from work, or she didn't have to go in till you know later or whatever. And I had just gotten off the phone uh, with one of my good friends talking about business and how he could systemize something and and how he needed to be bringing in uh, more more clients. And he's a client of mine and a good friend of mine. And I had done something else. Like I, it was, it was a very enjoyable morning for me. Not a, most mornings are not bad by any means, but this one was particularly fun and kind of casual. And I looked at my wife and and I snapped. I think I snapped about it. And I was like, it's hard to believe that this, meaning all of this cool stuff that I had just gotten through doing, it's hard to believe that this is work. And I, I want you to have that experience too, because. You don't have to be miserable every time you go into the office. I just want you to know that. Do you believe that, by the way? Do you believe that you can actually do something uh, that you enjoy? Yes, there will be challenges. Yes, there will be headaches. But do you actually believe that what you want to do, that hobby you want to turn into a business, do you actually believe it's possible? If you don't, I think that's where you need to start. But anyway, a couple of weeks ago, like I mentioned before, one of my friends told me he was finally starting his own business. And he's going to be installing home automation and home theater systems. When I bought my new speakers, actually, I didn't I didn't get his approval or feedback, actually, when I bought my new speakers. But we've talked about Blu-ray players and TVs and all that other stuff. If you followed my, my snaps and Instagrams about um, the new furniture, the speakers and the TV, he and I talk about that stuff all the time. It's a big it's a big uh, favorite topic for both of us. And I thought this was going to be a perfect business for him, a perfect fit. And like I said, we we would spend hours talking about this stuff, and he was able to find a way to turn that into a business. And so we were on Facebook Messenger, and I said, "That's a good that's a good gig for you, I think." And he says, "It's perfect for me. I was doing an install yesterday, and I was thinking to myself how much I love this crap." LOL. And I said, "That's awesome, man. That's so." awesome. And like I said, that's that's his example. You can find the same thing. When my friend told me his business was growing and he was getting more and more referrals, I, I, I couldn't have been happier for him. If you've ever heard a phrase that's lonely at the top, let me tell you that whoever said that or whoever said that phrase didn't do it right, in my opinion. And he said, hoping, my friend said, I'm hoping this side hustle picks up steam quickly, though. And this was before the other conversation. I said, what is it? He said, home theater and AV consulting. Planning to get into some resales once I have my business license. So far, I've had appointments each week since I started. And again, I, I said, that's great. I was so happy for him. But he still has his day job. And maybe you do too. In fact, the odds are you do still have a day job. And though he hasn't made his side hustle his main jam yet, he's found a way to make money doing what he loves. And while working on growing his business, he gets to do something he enjoys, which is playing with technology while talking about something that fascinates him, which is new gadgets. Those things fascinate me as well. And it doesn't get any better than that, at least for him. You might not have an interest in those things, but find something that you enjoy and that fascinates you, that excites you. And his success, my friend's success, is proof leaving your job and doing what you love is possible for every single one of us. So I grabbed my phone and I started taking notes in Evernote, which, by the way, my blog post from July 3rd, 2017, is why I might be switching from Evernote to Microsoft OneNote <gasps> using a Microsoft product. Anyway, so I grabbed my phone and I started taking notes and I, I wanted to lay out a few items to help you, listener, 
to develop a realistic plan for leaving your job so you can build a business you love. And if you're ready to put in the time, the effort, the energy, blood, sweat, and tears to start your business, I hope you will keep uh, keep listening. So here's how to really leave your job and do what you love. Again, no pie in the sky. No, oh yeah, I'm just going to start selling stuff. And then you realize, oh, we just skipped over the details and the actual work. None of that. But here are four things that I think you need to do today, after you're done listening to this, to begin planning out how you will leave your job and do something that you want to do and be profitable. We're not going to talk about just being and doing fun things. Let's talk about profit too. Step one. Begin by eliminating. The year before I got fired, the same year I made over $20,000 in one month, Ashley, my wife and I, we spent over $700 at the movies. (gasps) That probably includes drinks and beer and pizza and everything else because we love Flick's Brew House here in in Round Rock. But relax, it's, it's our money. I can do what I want with it, right? Uh, anyway, all joking aside, we, we spent a lot of money together doing things that we enjoyed, and going to the movies was one of those things. The year after I got fired, the first year I went all in and starting my business, we eliminated extraneous spending, and we cut back and cut back and cut back, and I think we only spent about $100 going to the movies the year afterward. If you're going to start a business, you've got to think about what you can eliminate from your life. And that means money, that means things on your calendar, that means obligations, that means saying no to the good things so you can say yes to the great things. I didn't come up with that quote, but it's something that I've always had in the back of my mind. So ask yourself what you can do without. What can you do with less of? And I know talking about eliminating isn't the coolest way to start talking about how to build a business. That's not the fun side. It's not the cool side, but I think it's one of the most important. And when it comes to removing things from your life, I'm also talking about getting rid of wasted time, wasted energy, and things that are on your calendar that don't help you achieve your goals. Maybe that's movies like you. Maybe it's video games. Maybe it's going to parties or cruises or vacations. I'm not picking on any one person. Those are all things that I enjoy doing except the parties part. You know, I'm an introvert. But even if you had all of the money in the world, you'd still have to eliminate something from your schedule so you'd have time that you need to put in the work because it's a lot of work. Okay, think about, think about, conceptualize how much work it would take to build your business. Think about it for a second. It's actually going to be more work than that. And I, I can guarantee that. So here are some things that you can do uh, to eliminate, sell a car, pay off debts, buy used products instead of new products, learn how to build or fix things yourself, cancel memberships that require time and money, even if they look good on a resume, like, um, actually this is probably one you should keep, but like Toastmasters, or there, there are certain affiliations or organizations that you might be spending money on to boost a resume. Nobody since starting my business I'm sure people are interested about my background. I know they are. Uh, Working for IBM, working in ad sales, managing an almost $20 million business for Dell. But nobody has asked me for my resume. Most of my business comes through referrals or SEO and those kinds of things. But my point is nobody's going to ask you for your resume, usually. They may ask for referrals, but not a resume and canceling those kinds of memberships in things that, that give you a badge or a certification, they're, pro- they're, they're not guaranteed, but they're likely to not even matter. Downsize your home. Get a smaller place. Stop hanging out with negative people. Oh, man, that, that should have been number one, and it could have been the only one because it's that important. Get negative people off your calendar. Stop spending time with negative Nancy. Just, just don't stop returning her phone calls. You know who I'm talking about, that person in your life that you uh, may enjoy hanging out with, may go in and grabbing a drink with, but all they do is complain. Get rid of that person. It sucks, but you got to do it. Start saying no more often. That's a big one too when you're looking for ways to eliminate. 
Again, I know it's not sexy to talk about giving things up when you want to live the the lavish <laughs> the lavish lifestyle of being a business owner. But you'll be glad you did, even if you don't start a business. Entrepreneurs, uh, they have to sacrifice probably more than than they expect to. And so I, I don't want you to sacrifice your family or your friends or your kids or your spouse when the things I just mentioned are much m- better sacrifices than than the positive relationships in your life. The second thing, step two, if you will, find something you love. There's no – write this someone down. There is no point in starting a business only to do something you hate. There is no point in starting a business if you're going to do something you do not enjoy. Believe me, building a business is enough work that you absolutely have to love what you do. I It's, <laughs> it's a labor of love. I, I, but I really like writing. I mostly like sitting behind a microphone and talking. I said reading, I think. I'm, I really enjoy writing. And I mostly enjoy doing podcast episodes. But there are other things that you, I, I still, to a, to a certain degree, really enjoy doing. And again, there's going to be headaches. But if you can't stand the work that you've set yourself up to do as your full-time job, you'll never get out of bed or find any motivation to do it. And in the case of my friend, the one with a audio-visual business, he started a business talking about a topic he was already talking about and doing for clients what he was already doing for himself. His business will allow him to do what he loves. So here are some helpful tips for finding something that you really enjoy. So ask yourself, what do I do in my spare time? And ask yourself, what would I do even if I didn't get paid for it? Ask yourself, what things do I keep coming back to and learning more about? I think you've answered those three questions uh, by themselves. You'd, you'd, you'd probably get some some clarity into what you would like to do uh, full-time. Like for me, it was leadership and personal development. And then when I started getting into building and designing my own websites before uh, I built a business around doing that for other people – I was I was learning about cool things to do with HTML and CSS and all the stuff that makes a website look cool. So I was doing that in my spare time. I was doing it long before I got paid for it. And I kept coming back to it and learning more about it. So here's some other things to help you. If you're still struggling, uh, try something new. Get out of your comfort zone and ask your friends and family what you do best. And if they say sitting on your... Beep and watching TV. Uh, either that's not what you should be doing, or become a media person and write about it, blog about movies and those kinds of things. There, think think about this for a second. If you looked hard enough, there's probably someone out there doing what you would like to do. I mean, just as weird as you could possibly think of. I am almost positive there's somebody out there already doing that and getting paid a bunch of money to do it. Would you agree? Do you, and, and just ask this question. What's the difference between them and you? They've been doing it longer. They lived in L.A. and were able to do it or whatever. Excuses. It's just excuses. The, they're they're probably not that much better at it than you. They've just sacrificed and dedicated their life to it. Anyway, once you've answered those questions and tried a few new things, it's time to start, well, you guessed it, eliminating the options so that you can find the best one. And once you've narrowed down your options to three or less, then you need to move on to step three, which is solve a problem. Now that you've determined what you can eliminate from your life and what you enjoy doing the most, figure out the problem your business and its products will solve. So find the problem and figure out how to fix that problem. And I don't lead with this step, the problem solving step, because the problem you solve might be not, might not be all that fun for you. And it might not be the one you'd have fun solving again and again and again. And for other people, if you're not going to have fun in your business, you will never never be able to drag yourself out of bed and do the work. 
The entrepreneurial mindset is this. Find a problem, fix a problem. Problem solving is one of the foundations of the entrepreneurial mindset. And entrepreneurs find problems and fix them. Often the problems that we once faced are the ones that we are going to fix for others. We've figured out how to fix it for ourselves. Now we can profit from fixing that same problem for other people. And just as a side note, as we're looking for, you know, in the context of thinking, you know, your business isn't for everybody, your products aren't for everybody, you don't need to go create problems so that you can turn around and fix them. That sounds like what the government would do. But find people that have that problem. You know, when you're, when you're niching down, when you're focusing, don't try to explain what you, how you fix things to people. Find the people with that problem and they will immediately understand what you do to fix it or that they need you. So just keep that in mind. So here's some other helpful tips for finding a problem to solve. Well, <laughs> like I just said, find a problem you have, fix it. Find other people with the same problem and offer to fix it. And I know it's simple to say find a problem, fix a problem, but that in a nutshell is what entrepreneurs do. And it gets, on one hand, I want to say it gets more complicated than that. On another hand, I don't think it does get more complicated than that. I'm going to be uh, on Entrepreneur on Fire with... Uh, John Lee Dumas here, and, and actually it'll probably be a few months before the episode airs, but uh, stay tuned and I'll I'll keep you updated for that. Or better yet, uh, hop on my email list and I will email you uh, when that when that goes live. But John's problem was he ran out of content to listen to. He was working, he was commuting, and he did not have enough uh, inspirational material for him to listen to. What did he do? He fixed that problem by creating a seven day a week podcast. Now with thousands of episodes, or however many it is, he f- he has he has found he f- found the problem, and he fixed the problem, and now he makes two or three million dollars a year, um, showing other people how to kind of do the same thing. Find a problem, fix a problem. That's the entrepreneurial uh, mindset. And as the saying goes, if you want to make a million dollars, then help a million people. And the more problems you can solve, the more money you can make. And after this exercise, if you still have multiple things that you could do for your business, and if those things are are all equally enjoyable, so if you have a lot of things that you could do, find the one that's most enjoyable. But if they're all equally enjoyable, then think about which business idea has the largest target market or which idea could be the most profitable. If the target market is small and you can't make any money solving a problem for that small market, you should probably move on. Step four, understand the costs. Now, it does not take a lot of money to start a business these days. Lauren Gaggioli and I talked about it. Uh, I think I wrote a blog post about the true cost of starting a business uh, there's, there's content on ellerywells.com about that, but I started my business with almost zero dollars in startup capital. And I, I only invested in upgrades after my products and services generated revenue. You don't have to drag yourself into a bank and beg for a small business loan to get started. And, uh, if you check out my episode with Lauren Gaggioli, because she and I talk about how much it costs to get started. And when, when we looked at what she was doing, uh, she had ended up finding over a thousand dollars in expenses that she could eliminate. So, uh, it's, it's well worth your time to, uh, understand the cost, what it really takes. And then again, look at, at what you can eliminate. You don't, man, word, I'm telling you, WordPress is free guys. You can pay a lot for a designer. You can pay a few hundred dollars for themes and software, but WordPress is free. And if you're willing to trade some sweat equity into learning the tool, you will probably uh, probably, probably benefit from it. Now, there, there is something to be said about being an expert. I charge two or three hundred dollars per month to manage websites for clients, but we're great at it. We are pros. We are fast. And ultimately, you know, you don't want to be spending time 
messing with your website when you should be out doing other things. So there's a little plug for Dwizzywood Media's uh, web services, but do what you do best and leave the tech stuff to the pros. And anyway, WordPress is free hosting uh, is, is let's call it $10 a month. It's actually a little bit less than that, but let's call it that. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details here, but hosting was the biggest cost in my business when I got started. WordPress was free. I used free themes, um, and I broke my site a bunch of times. That's how I figured out what the heck I was doing. And now, now after, uh, wow, yeah, over f- almost five and a half years of working with WordPress, I'm pretty pretty dang good at it. So here's some helpful tips for determining the cost that that you'll need to, to start your business. List everything you'll need. But write it down on a piece of paper and probably write the, the costs for that. Uh, visit the websites of the businesses offering the services or the products or the software or whatever that you think you'll need and shop for the best price possible. And if you go to lraywells.com slash resources, you can see the list of tools that I use and recommend. And it's pretty well up to date. I've taken things off of that. I've added things to it to make it as uh, up to date and frequent, not frequent, but uh, up to date and, and accurate as possible. Ellerywells.com slash resources. But also determine what you need, what you could do without, at least for a little while, and what you could bootstrap yourself until you turn a profit. My business has always been profitable, and I'm not bragging. Maybe that's like a humble brag. I don't know, but I'm telling that what I, there's nothing that I've done that you can't do. Have you heard me and say that enough? Uh, just anyway, consider outsourcing to the experts. That's the last thing for helpful tips to determining your costs. Uh, I figured out that I could run my business for about three hundred dollars a month in, in expenses, and maybe that's a lot. Maybe it isn't. But the way I've set things up allows me to work from anywhere and I'm able to scale up or down depending on client load at almost any time. And I know what I'm good at and I stick to those things and I outsource the rest. Your best cost reducing task could be paying someone else to do that task. So don't forget to think about hiring an expert. Step five is read exit strategy. I know, self-promotional, but seriously... Uh, I think it's one of the best resources in 300 pages that you could possibly get. Um, it's not it's not fluff. There's there's my story in there, but it gets pretty detailed pretty quick. So it's one you're going to want to dog ear and highlight and underline and and keep with you, or or have your computer close so that you can work on the things, especially in uh, part three of the roadmap. But once you've figured out what you can eliminate, found something you love doing, that prov. Profit tip that's funny. Found something you love doing that profitably solves a problem, or that you can solve a problem with profit and make a profit, and determined what your startup costs can be, it's time to start developing your actual exit strategy. We've done all of the work, we've done all the math, we've eliminated, we've cut, now we need to know what to do. And to build your exit strategy, I suggest you invest just a few dollars and buy exit strategy, the exact tactics to transition from where you have to be to where you want to be. It's available on Amazon. You can go to theexitstrategybook.com or if you really want, and I don't know how long this link will be available. If you've listened to a bunch of episodes, you probably have heard me say this before. Um, If you go to elleraywells.com slash free, you can get a free copy. Just pay the eight dollars, eight eighty four, I think it is, for me to have it shipped to you. Promise, don't make any money on that one. Um, you can grab it, uh, grab it there, or if you want the Kindle version, uh, or ship it internationally, um, go to go to Amazon. So, in my book, I outline the only business model that works, which I have talked about on the blog. The content types you should create to establish your brand in the marketplace and how you can lay a solid foundation for a successful and scalable business. So I mentioned my my mastermind call today and the challenges that one of the guys was facing. One of the girls was facing – or she she's wanting to do her business. And when we're talking about creating content to establish your brand in the marketplace – 
it's it's really a conversation about why should anybody give a crap what you're doing? Why should someone give you their time to have a cup of coffee with you to hear about what you do with your business? Why are you important? Why? Are, what makes you stand out? Creating content and using content marketing as a strategy is the answer to that. You can show people publicly what your friends and family and, and small group of clients may already know. Content marketing will show the world. And we talk about what types of content that should be. And I'm not talking about just blogs. I'm not talking about just podcasts. These are fairly universal things that you can do in your business to establish your brand. We talk about that in Exit Strategy. So helpful tips for reading Exit Strategy. Read it with a pen and notebook handy. Read it once all the way through and then go back to part three of the roadmap. I'd love this because it gets me more sales. See, you don't you just love this this candid uh, transparency. Um, I try to try to provide that for you. But find a buddy, buy two copies to work and work through it with them, and keep each other accountable uh, to the dreams that you've set out for what you want to achieve with your life. And do everything the book says. If you do everything that Exit Strategy says, and you don't get positive results, email me, and I want to know. Uh, what happened and and I will help you if you do everything that the book says and you don't get uh, any results. The last thing there would be to hire a business coach or join a mastermind when you're done with exit strategy to help you with business development and strategic planning. One thing that I've noticed working with a lot of artists and creative people who are making things and doing wonderful things, have great skills and talents. A lot of people don't have a just a brain for business. And that's that's fine. I mean, that you would want to dilute your painting skills to learn go to business school. I mean, Picasso didn't go to Harvard, but you know, have somebody who can you can bounce ideas from, get feedback from, who can help you move forward faster than you'd be able to get on yourself. The last step, this you know, this uh, this one here, five reading exit strategy might sound a little bit pro, uh, self promotional. But I'm living proof that exit strategy works and the principles inside work and the roadmap in part three works. And right now I'm in my studio when I wrote the post. This this episode is based off of I was on my front porch and I was enjoying the great Texas weather. Actually, I'm about to go outside as soon as I'm done recording and producing this. But I, I doing what I love at this very moment, all because of the tactics that I outlined in exit strategy. And don't worry. Even if you don't want to start an online business, the strategies in the book will help and they work and they will help you build your brand and grow your company. Here's a here's a fun fact. One of my businesses is not an online business. They uh, do event promotion here, uh, here in the uh, Austin area, uh, but they allow for online entry forms and i when we they they hire me quite quite a bit uh hire my business my company to be basically be their virtual IT staff and the things that we do things that my team and I do for them are all things that are based on exit strategy and they haven't written a single blog post so i'm telling you it works so here's a summary for you after you have eliminated everything you can from your life and, your, and from your budget and from your calendar, look at your budget and you will see how much revenue and time your business needs to generate before you can leave your job. It will not be a light switch. It will be a dimmer switch. It will be a transition. It will be a gradual process. And when you've put your exit strategy in play and your revenues catch up with your salary or hourly wage, you're ready to make your exit and take the leap. Do you see how that works? How you how you get a budget on one side and you know exactly what you need to generate with your business. And then once you get about probably halfway there and you can get the, the other half by investing more time and energy that is now being sent to your day job. Take some time off, work on your business, and that's that transition, that gradual dimmer switch, not light switch that happens. And uh, if you really want to take make an effort to transition into work you love, I would suggest reading another blog post that I that I wrote called actually you will find this on March 30th's podcast episode. 
If you wanted to pick my brain, here's the business advice I would give you. Check that one out. I think it goes hand in hand with this. Uh, with this episode, and I think you will enjoy that one as well. Maybe maybe you've already listened to it. I don't know. Man, I, I took a Claritin D like two or three hours ago, and I still feel congested. Do I sound congested? It's so annoying. I can barely breathe out of my, my nose. It was nice when we were in D.C. I still had to take a Claritin, but it wasn't quite as bad. And then we come back here to Austin, and man, when we, when we landed, the sky was like smog. I don't know if what it was weird if we had another forest fire in Bastrop or something. Maybe I turned to my wife as we were getting in the car, and I was like, "Man, I hope that's not pollen in the air." But I've got uh, I, whenever I listen back and I'm editing this as I go, I, I feel like I'm all I feel like I'm all nasally. It's probably embarrassing to have on a podcast, but whatever. You know, we're friends. We're cool here. That was me uh, pinching my nose, but. Anyway, I, from Round Rock, Texas, not quite allergy-free. It's going to be a hot one here. I'm your host, Ellery Wells. And I want you to go do something awesome. I want you to go do something fun. And while you're at it, uh, pop over to iTunes or Stitcher, find the Ellery Wells Show, and give me a rating and review. Oh, I think I mentioned this. I don't know. Uh, I started, you know, my brand is Empowering and Equipping Entrepreneurs. So if you go over to Facebook... There is a, if you go search, search for empowered and equipped and join our Facebook group. Come say hello. Um, it's not something that I promote a whole lot. I probably should. It's a cool, uh, cool community of people, uh, and entrepreneurs, people who believe like you and I do, who want to, you know, bare bones of their business and build, that's a lot of bees, bare bones or business and build something uh, sustainable in their, in their off hours. And come say hello, come chat, uh, chat with us, share your business, talk about your goals, those kinds of things. And um, let's, let's do something amazing together. Hope you're having an awesome day. Thanks for listening. And uh, for all things about entrepreneurship and what's going on with me, stay tuned to elleriewells.com. Sign up for my email list. I'll send you great stuff. And you know the drill by now. I hope you have an awesome day. Mm-hmm.